Generally speaking, the older we get, the more we enjoy Thanksgiving Day. I'm sure that is because with the passage of time, we have more to be thankful for. At least that is the case for me. Thanksgiving Day gets better and better for me every single year, and it's because I get to spend time with my family. Time is the one thing that none of us get back. The more I'm given, the more I appreciate the fact that it has been given. The longer I live, the more determined I am to spend whatever time I've got left doing things that actually matter. It wasn't always so easy. My first Thanksgiving away from home was quite spectacular. November 24th, 1982 was the day before Thanksgiving. It was also the day when I reported for duty with Scout Platoon, 3rd Battalion, 325th Airborne Infantry Regiment, 82nd Airborne Division. As a private first class, I had it all figured out. I would get to my unit, sign in, draw gear, get assigned to my room in the barracks, and then head to Florida for Thanksgiving with Dale Jarvie, who was my roommate who arrived at the unit the same day I did. It's good to have plans when you're in the military because planning is what makes it all work. Then First Sergeant Thomas A. Charo screamed at my platoon sergeant. Sergeant Hayward, get these cherries packed up, squared away, and ready to go to war in two hours. Be sure they understand what it means to be on DRF-1 status. There had better be no screw-ups this weekend. I'm thinking to myself, this weekend? I won't be screwing up at Fort Bragg this weekend because I won't be here. Well, what's that DRF-1 thing he was talking about? Well, I was about to find out. The concept of being a scout in the battalion that is designated as Division Ready Force 1 was explained to us in no uncertain terms as Jarvie and I were cramming all the items that we are required to have packed down into our A-bags. I had no idea that a duffel bag could hold so much stuff without exploding. Everything that we needed to have with us in combat, less chow, ammo, and sensitive items, were packed into our rucksacks. After it was loaded, I struggled to get it on my back. It was my first experience with a mission-ready rucksack. I could not believe that I would be carrying that much weight into battle, and it wasn't even fully loaded. Then we had to rig our rucksacks to be safely strapped to us for a parachute drop. We couldn't leave the barracks without signing out. When we did sign out, we had to have the address and phone number of our destination and how long we planned on being there. While we were out, we had to call in every hour. Should there be an alert, we would have less than two hours to be back to the unit and a assembled with our gear, ready to go to war. Welcome to the 82nd Airborne Division. We don't care if you enjoy your stay here. You signed up for this. You won't sit, you get sit. My first Thanksgiving away from home. At least it was very interesting, yet very boring at the same time. However it is remembered, it was a bit of a rude awakening, especially having a first sergeant who looked like Fred Flintstone in camouflage. He and I would do the dance for the Uniform Code of Military Justice several times over the course of my life in the division, but I walked away unscathed every single time. Here's a pro tip. When presented with an Article 15 proceeding for non-judicial punishment, always, always, always request court-martial unless you are absolutely guilty. In all fairness to First Sergeant Charo, in the spring of 1986, he did recommend that I be promoted to Sergeant E5. He was the only First Sergeant sitting on my promotion board who ding me any points. He gigged me one point just so I wouldn't walk away from the promotion board with a perfect score. Yabba dabba do. I remember spending Thanksgiving Day trying to destroy my brand new Chevy Love four-wheel drive pickup truck in Area J near the barracks. I did not have a phone number for that location and cell phones didn't exist. I was living very dangerously and dropping by the barracks every hour to make sure that World War III didn't start without me. I had a brand new truck that I'd spent my entire enlistment bonus as the down payment for, and I was expressing my thanksgiving by making it fly. I watched too much Dukes of Hazard back home as a kid. As I took it down a notch, I remember sitting on the tailgate of my truck at Quezon Hill, eating a heated sea ration turkey bomb with accessories, knowing that Thanksgiving Day 1983 would be much better. I was right. It was. By the time Thanksgiving Day 1983 arrived, I was a combat veteran. Thanksgiving Day could never be the same again. I enjoyed it so much more. If millions of my fellow Americans knew that in the previous couple of months we had been within minutes of all-out nuclear war on two occasions, I have no doubt that Thanksgiving would have taken on a new depth of meaning for them too. I've had a lot of ups and downs over the course of the years that have followed, but Thanksgiving Day is a daily thing for me. But each Thanksgiving Day in November just gets better and better as I mark another year that God has carried me through. He keeps giving me greater and greater blessings the longer I live because I need them and I can't live without them. I am not even able to express the thanksgiving that is in my heart over the fact that God has allowed me to live to see the day that I have grandchildren. 
Those grandchildren are more evidence of just how much God loves all of us. Oftentimes, when they speak to me, they do so in Russian. Their father is from Kiev, Ukraine. He and his family came to the United States when he was just a little boy. I am thankful for the fact that most Americans nowadays don't think that's very much of a story. If they did, they would have had to have lived the kind of life that I've lived, and I am thankful that most people haven't. When I step back in time to Thanksgiving 1983, I remember it like it was yesterday. My family was living inside of the nuclear strike zones of both the United States and the Soviet Union. I had future family members who were serving in the Red Army then, and we were training to kill each other. It is astounding that our countries could depend on each other and stand together in hard times, only to hold a knife to each other's throats for decades afterward. What a shame. What a waste. It was only by the narrowest of margins that the human race even survived the Cold War. I try to think of the millions of prayers from millions of people and millions of miracles that had to happen between then and now in order for my family to exist, and I will never be able to think about those facts in a casual way. Having been born in Florida just a couple of years after the Cuban Missile Crisis, I grew up in a society that was kind of conditioned to believe that one day the Cold War was definitely going to get real hot. Every single time that I look at my grandchildren, I recognize that I am looking at just one bit of evidence that demonstrates how much God loves us all. Every Thanksgiving Day is the greatest Thanksgiving Day for me because it amazes me that God has allowed me to live it. To be together with my family and give thanks to God for all that He has done for us, to share a meal that He has provided, to experience the love that can only come from Him makes every Thanksgiving Day the best Thanksgiving ever. It doesn't matter what has happened all throughout the year. Just to be alive and with my family on that day is so very precious to me. We all have much to be thankful for every single day, but I hope that everyone everywhere will have a truly spectacular Thanksgiving Day because Thanksgiving displaces sadness, fear, and despair. God loves us. His love is sufficient because it is His love that saves us from ourselves and from the enemy. And there is only one enemy to the human race. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His mercy endures forever.